Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on Major Hurricane Ian. So Ian is now a devastating Category 3 hurricane that is crossing over Cuba and into the Gulf of Mexico. And so it is en route to Florida where it is expected to bring some life-threatening impacts. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update on the tropics. And to show your support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. And so now as we take a look at the Caribbean, here we have a closer view of Ian. And so we can see the major hurricane churning, uh, making its way into western Cuba, bringing very, very dangerous conditions. That storm surge, those strong winds, as well as that heavy rainfall. So uh, western Cuba is certainly taking a hit from this cyclone here. But uh, the other bands of Ian were resulting in flooding across sections of Jamaica. And so today conditions should improve, even though there are likely to be showers and thunderstorms from the bands of the cyclone things are not expected to be as bad as they were yesterday because of course Ian is moving away and that is going to be resulting in less impacts across Jamaica so there should be improved weather conditions across the island today and so it is not going to be over Cuba for a very long time and so that shouldn't impact the intensity too much because under normal circumstances once we have a tropical cyclone making its way over land that would result in weakening because of course tropical cyclones depend on that uh, fuel from the warm sea surface temperatures and so being over land it is basically cut off from all that but Ian is not going to be over Cuba for a long time so it's likely to maintain intensity and then continue to intensify once it emerges into the southeastern gulf of Mexico and so it is likely that Cuba is experiencing dangerous conditions uh, that coastal flooding as a result of the storm surge as well as very heavy rainfall and of course destructive winds from the cyclone and so uh, hopefully persons there are okay but this cyclone is going to be making its way to Florida and other bands have been affecting the area but I mean the main part of the storm is en route and so as we look at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center here we can see that there are so many watches and warnings that are in place we have a hurricane warning still in effect for Cuba right now as the storm is passing over and areas that are a little bit more east of that warning area are likely to experience tropical storm conditions and hence they're under a tropical storm warning and then uh Ian, as I said, is expected to intensify even further, and it is likely that maximum sustained winds will be at around 140 miles per hour. And so the storm is expected to make landfall in Florida as a major hurricane. The hurricane warning is in effect for Bonita Beach to the Enclote River, including Tampa Bay, as well as the dry tour to guess. So those areas are all under a hurricane warning, and uh, those very dangerous conditions are expected. And so even though these areas uh, are likely to feel the worst of Ian, the surrounding areas will also be uh, taking a hard hit from the cyclone. And so persons there are advised to take the necessary precautions if they haven't been doing so, uh, beginning preparations, because this is no joke. But it is eventually expected to start to make its way up to the north into Georgia and then eventually weaken into a depression, of course, because it is going to be overland and then uh, further up into the southeastern United States. And so guys, even though it is likely to be very weak at the time, it could still be a rainmaker for some areas and also uh, increase that risk of that flooding taking place inland, especially in low-lying areas. And so now let's go ahead and talk about the favorability of the environment for Ian. And so first up, we're going to be taking a look at the wind shear map. And so here we have these different colors that indicate the favorability of the wind shear. We have the red, that means unfavorable wind shear. That's when we have those strong upper level winds really interfering with the tropical cyclone and helps to inhibit further intensification and growth. Next, we have neutral shear that won't be too impactful, but but what tropical cyclones like is favorable wind shear. So that is when the shear is not really going to be taking a toll on the system. So as Ian is going to be accelerating into the Gulf of Mexico and headed to the Florida coast, things are expected to get a little bit unfavorable in the region because there is uh, that increase in the wind shear that is expected and that will eventually help to weaken the system. And so there's also going to be that dry air. So looking at this map right now, this water vapor map, we can see that dry 
earmarked by the yellow that is across sections of the southeastern U.S. And so uh, Ian is going to be making its way into a region that has drier conditions along with that strong uh, vertical wind shear and those are going to be helping the cyclone to weaken and that is why landfall isn't expected in Florida while the system is going to be at peak intensity so that is some good news but nevertheless it is still a very dangerous situation for the area and then looking at sea surface temperatures here we are seeing that uh, we have very favorable sea surface temperatures across the Gulf of Mexico and those will really be helping to boost the cyclone so it if it was not for the dry air that is up ahead as well as the unfavorable shear i don't have any doubts that we could see a very strong system maybe a system as strong as even laura or ida but uh, thankfully here we have these unfavorable conditions that are going to be setting in and so again guys if you are in florida it's likely that you're probably taking the necessary precautions right now but uh, if you haven't you are encouraged to do so landfall is expected as you're going to be headed into the early morning hours of thursday Day. and so uh, that is going to be something that's pretty dangerous I mean it's pretty dark outside at 2 a.m so to have landfall around that time is going to be absolutely crazy especially from a major hurricane so guys just ensure that you are in a safe location listen to your local officials and just take all the necessary precautions and stay safe and then if you're in other states such as georgia or even the carolinas it is possible that ian could move into the area but we see the cone widen here because the center can pass anywhere within this region so nothing is set right now uh changes are still possible with the system and that is just the inevitable when we're talking about the weather there are just so many possibilities and uh the cyclone can go anywhere within this region so it's likely to still bring all of that rainfall along with it even as a weakened tropical cyclone at that time uh very early next week or late this weekend going into the early part of next week and so guys again ian is going to be bringing those very dangerous conditions to the state of florida it is already pounding uh, Cuba and it is going to be making its way to Florida uh, likely as a major hurricane it will be bringing that storm surge those very strong winds as well as that very heavy rainfall so conditions are going to be absolutely devastating once the cyclone makes landfall and Thankfully, it is likely that Ian isn't going to be at its strongest at the time of landfall. But nevertheless, as I said, it is still a very dangerous situation here because, of course, it is going to likely be a major hurricane at that time and a Category 3 at that. So, uh, again, guys, I can't emphasize it enough that you should take the necessary precautions and stay safe and do not take any unnecessary risks. And so that is really it for now. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. And of course, remember to always be with the wise.